Hey, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to be going over manual holding using the OBS function of the G1000 NXI. So if you think that sounds interesting, grab a drink, get comfy, we've got a lot to go over on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back to the cockpit, everyone, of the beautiful Diamond DA62. If you are new to the channel, I would love to welcome you, and don't forget to go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. You don't want to miss any future episodes just like this one. And if this does help you out in any way, smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us get found by viewers like yourself. Now, before we just go out there and willy-nilly try to fly a holding pattern, let's go over a little briefing as to what we're going to be flying today. All right, so let's take a look at the Bitsy 2 arrival into Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Now, before we go over anything further, we need to first talk about the two types of manual holding that ATC may ask you to perform. The first would be an unpublished hold. And the second would be a published hold. Now, if ATC was asking you to hold at an unpublished location, it may go something like this. Hold Northwest Jita intersection, maintain 12,000, expect further clearance 0400 Zulu. Now, if ATC was to ask you to hold at a published location, it may go something like this. Hold at Bitsy is published, maintain 11,000, expect further clearance 0400 Zulu. So now that you know that, what we're going to be practicing today is an unpublished hold. So we're going to make believe that ATC just asked us to hold at the Jita intersection, maintaining 12,000 feet. Now, one of the things that he did not mention was whether this was going to be a right or a left hand turn hold. Now, because he didn't mention anything, that means that we're going to automatically enter the hold on a right hand turning pattern. Now, the next thing that we need to look at is our inbound and outbound headings for this particular hold. Now, also, we're going to imagine that this hold is going to be a seven nautical mile hold just for sake of the video. Now, the first heading that you see up here is 152. So that would be our inbound heading to Jita. The outbound heading is going to be the reciprocal of that, and all you got to do to get that is just add 180 to 152. So our outbound heading is going to be 332 degrees, inbound is going to be 152 degrees. Now, speaking about inbound and outbound, because we're going to be using the OBS and the course knob today on the G1000, we're also going to be using heading hold as well. Now, when performing a holding pattern, your outbound leg is always going to be using the heading hold. The inbound leg will always be using the course and OBS style. So we're going to be coming from Holston Mountain VOR right here on a radial of 093 out of the VOR to the Jita transition. As we cross Jita, the idea is to then engage the heading hold and turn that to our outbound course of 332. So now that you got an idea of the intended course, let's hop in the diamond and fly this holding pattern so you get a better idea on how this works in the G1000. Welcome back to the cockpit of the diamond DA62. Let's get a couple things set up here on the GPS so that we can fly this holding pattern. Now, the first thing that we need to do is get our holding speed down correctly. So we're right around speed that we want to be between 120 and 130. Next thing we need to do is make sure that we get to our 12,000 feet, which ATC wanted us to be at. Next, we've got our GPS engaged and you can see we are on our way to the Jita transition here. Let's flip over here to the MFD side and let's zoom out a little bit. Now, if we do so, you can see that I've deleted the rest of this flight plan just to alleviate any hiccups or any crashes that we may get during this procedure. All right, so now back over here, there's a couple things that we need to set up on the GPS so that we can have all the information we need. 
First thing we need to do is get the RMI needle to populate down here. To do that, all you need to do is hit on the PFD option and the bearing. You want to get to GPS, and when you do, you're going to see this little blue RMI needle populate. Once you have it, perfect. Now you can hit back. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to twist our heading bug all the way over to the right hand side. Now keep in mind that we are going to be only making right hand turns on this holding pattern. So to start this, we're going to turn the heading to the right hand side. If we were to set this to our outbound course of 332, as you see, it's going to be on the left hand side of the compass rose, which is going to turn our plane to the left. So let's get that set back at a course of 240. Now the next thing that we need to do is activate the OBS function. To do that, just smack on that OBS button and it will engage OBS. Now you're going to know that because OBS is going to populate down here in your compass heading or your HSI. It's also going to populate at the very top in our autopilot information. So now you can see we're on an OBS course of 97 degrees direct to Jita. Perfect. Now that we have all of that set up, now we just have to sit back, relax, and wait until we get a little bit closer. So when we do, I'll bring you guys back so you can see how we're going to proceed with this holding pattern. Okay, so it looks like we are just under one mile out, so we're going to get prepared to make our outbound leg. As this distance closes in, we're going to just take an eye on this RMI needle, and there it goes. It's starting to flip right now. We just crossed. Now we have entered heading hold mode. Now what we're going to do is turn our heading bug until we get to the 332 heading, but not to go past the tail end of the HSI, just because you don't want the plane to then turn to the left. All right, so now we have our heading set at 332. Now what we need to do is set our inbound course on our OBS dial right here. That inbound course was 152. So all we need to do is set that up to 152. And we should be all set. There we go. Now you can pay attention to this little RMI needle here and that's showing us the location of that waypoint. So we hop over here to the MFD side. You can see that we are now in front of the waypoint a little bit and we are just about making our turn to come back up. Now that's why we want to pay attention to this little RMI needle because that is what's going to show us when we are abeam the waypoint. At that point is when we're going to start adding the distance to whatever we have up here. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So now we are on our course of 332 and right up right about now we are abeam the waypoint and we're about a mile away. So now if we're going to be doing a seven nautical mile holding pattern, we just want to add seven miles to that one mile. So right around eight nautical miles out is when we're going to start our inbound turn. Now the other thing that you want to pay attention to is your crosswind. Now because we do have a four knot crosswind coming from our left, I'm going to just compensate our heading just a bit. I'm just going to bring it back to 329 degrees. That should keep us from moving too much. This way, once we make our turn inbound, we're not off course all that much. I'll show you what I'm talking about once we get out there around eight miles out. So until then, sit back and relax. I'll come back at you once we're about eight miles away from the waypoint. All right, so we're about six miles away from the waypoint right now. And as you can see, we are making a perfect track up parallel to our 152 course. Now what we're going to do once we're eight miles out is we're going to turn our heading bug 90 degrees plus 45 degrees to intercept our GPS course. We're also going to activate the GPS hold, but it may not show up here in green until it captures that course. So let's show you how that's going to work right now. 
we're going to turn 90 degrees, plus 45, and we're going to activate GPS mode. Now, as you see up here at the top, GPS mode is in white, and it just captured in green. So now we know we're in GPS mode, we can now go ahead and set up our heading hold again for our next upwind leg. So now here's what I was talking about by compensating for the wind. So as you can see, we are trying to catch this course, but it looks like we're gonna overshoot it just a little bit. So that tells me that I didn't compensate enough for that four knot crosswind. But it's okay because the GPS is gonna put us back on course and on our next upwind leg, I will go ahead and set our heading to 328 instead of 329. Hopefully that will adjust enough so that it doesn't throw us off course so much like it is right now. All right, so once we get about a half a mile out, I'll bring you guys back so you can see the next turn in our holding procedure. Oh, and by the way, if you are enjoying today's content, a sub to the channel would be fantastic. All right, so it looks like we're about a mile out now. And by the way, if you guys have any questions along the way, please go ahead and post those down below in the comments section. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now we're gonna watch that RMI needle. We're also going to get our hand ready on that heading hold. And as soon as we see that needle start to flip on us, we will now engage the heading hold. There it goes. We've engaged heading hold. And now we're just going to tickle this gauge around until we get to our 328. And just always remember that your outbound leg, you're always going to be using heading hold. Your inbound is always going to be using the OBS function. Now you can do this as many times as you need. And then when you're ready to exit that holding pattern, all you need to do is deactivate the OBS. So you would just hit the OBS button. So now if we take a look over here on the MFD, we are almost a beam the waypoint. And if we look over here on the PFD, we can see right now that we are just passing that waypoint. Now keep in mind, we're now a mile and a half out. So now we need to add seven miles to that. So at eight and a half miles is when we would start our inbound leg turn. And again, I've also got a set at a heading of 328 to help compensate for that four knot crosswind. So once we get about a half a mile out, I'll bring you guys back. We'll start our inbound leg and wrap up this video. Okay, everyone. So it looks like we are just about eight and a half miles out. We're going to start our turn for our downwind leg or our inbound leg. And we can hit the nav and you'll see the GPS populate up here again in white. That means it has not captured the GPS course yet. We are still in heading hold mode, but you want to turn that heading bug 90 degrees plus 45 to intercept the GPS OBS course. Now, once the GPS does capture that heading course of 152, there you go. It switched right over to green and now the GPS has us in nav mode. So now again, we can go ahead and rotate that heading hold all the way back around to 300 and get us ready for our upwind leg. All right, so as you can see, the GPS has captured that 152 course that we have set in for our OBS. And we are now about seven and a half miles from the Jatia waypoint. Again, you can continue doing this all day and all night as long as you want. Whenever you're done, you're ready to exit that holding pattern. All you need to do is come right down here to the OBS tap on that OBS knob and there you go. It is now exited the OBS feature. In any case, I want to thank everybody for joining us on today's episode. If you guys have any questions, please post those down below in the comment section. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. And if this video did help you out, a big old thumbs up to the channel is greatly appreciated. Well, to all my flight simmers around the world, keep the blue side up. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.